Hey everybody, Rex Bear, Leak Project. How the heck are you? This podcast is a live action role playing game. It's for entertainment purposes only. We think people have the right to think for themselves. Will there be a staged fake alien invasion? Let's talk about it. Ladies and gentlemen, Rex Bear Leak Project, how the heck are you? Super excited for today's opportunity. We have John D'Souza with us retired FBI special agent. He has worked counterterrorism and paranormal cases for over 25 years. He was also an attorney and maintained a top secret security clearance during his time in the US government. John has collected true life X-Files that were used on the highly popular show, The X-Files. He also shares many of these cases in his best-selling books and his worldwide presentations. Now I've met John personally, great guy. One of Leak Project's most popular podcasts was with John. If you haven't seen that one yet, definitely want to watch it. I'll leave a link in the video description box. But this right here, The Extra Dimensionals, True Tells and Concepts of Alien Visitors, is a must-read, as well as Clear Hearers. He also has a third book that is titled The Terra Investigators. Now, this is 52 True Tells and Concepts of Supernaturally Gifted Investigators. Before we get started, I do want to thank my friends over at BoomerBoost.com. I've got I've been taking Gladiator Barley from Boomer Boost. This stuff is amazing. They even have a special process to grow it. It goes back thousands of years and it's an ancient heirloom seed. The Gladiators were actually taking. Now, I've got my neighbor on this Gladiator Barley. She's still on a half scoop a day. I've already noticed a difference in the way that she walks. It is amazing. She personally came up to me the other day when I was taking out the trash and said how much better she was feeling. I could tell before she even said anything by the way she was walking. Just a couple of weeks ago, literally a couple of weeks ago, she was walking with walking sticks. Now she's walking up like this. She has been dealing with MS. She looks great. She's feeling great. She said she's really excited to get up to the full scoop. If you go to boomerboost.com, use the code REX, you'll get an extra five bucks off. I'll leave a link in the video description box. Now they'll even talk to you in person. If you want to go to their office, they've got a brick and mortar store in Florida. They'll talk to you on the phone. They're very friendly. If they can't help you, they'll point you in the right direction. Now, let's bring in John right now. I gotta say, before we bring in John though, are you wondering if the gauntlet is about to be dropped? Now, the recent 2021 Intel report, in the Intel report, they show specifically a new program or at least a uniform program. I don't know how long it's been there. It's publicly available now to, to read about. It's under Naval Intelligence. And it is the Unidentified Aerial Threat Program. Now, this is the actual physical copy right here. You can get a physical copy. You can download it or you can read it. I'll leave a link in the video description box. But this is the Intelligence Authorization Act for the fiscal year of 2021. And on page 11, it describes the advanced aerial threats. Now, this committee supports the efforts of the Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon Task Force. That's the name of it. Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon Task Force at the Office of Naval Intelligence. So if the CIA or the FBI or the sheriff picks up something on UFO or a UFO or a fleet of UFOs, they then send that in to this special team of investigators within 180 days. And we're going to get John's take on this. It seems like the timing of this with the Space Force being presented as another branch of the military, it's just perfect timing to get the people behind this new opportunity. Now, first of all, I think it's fascinating. The, the Space Force, super exciting. Let's just hope it goes in the right direction. Are there technologies that you can travel the stars without having to be put into a craft and launched into space with a nuclear rocket? I don't know, maybe. So let's see what John has to say. X-Files, that's what I'm talking about. John, you look amazing. I love your shirt. Ladies and gentlemen, would you just look at it? Oh my goodness. That is actually one of my favorite letters in the alphabet and my favorite character in Star Trek. So the Q, nice. how awesome is that, man? So what's going on, John? Nice. Well, I mean, I'm imagining that uh, I, I want somebody to do a, uh, to do the, uh, Q graphic novel uh, with Q as a superhero so we can have that scene like the Superman scene 
where he's like wearing something. It's all cut, and he's and he's you know, and he runs to go to the the telephone booth to uh, get changed into his Q superhero. And he just you see have that scene where he just goes like that and opens it up as he's changing to go and fight mainstream newscasters and other evil doers who are out there uh, victimizing the American public every day with their sewage, their garbage, and their misdirection. I mean, it's just. It's just horrible. It's just, and, and Q is one of the one of the few sources of information that we have today that we can absolutely trust. And you know, I, and some people will disagree with that, uh, even in even in the alternative community. But I absolutely believe it, and because I've seen it according to the evidence I've seen from Q. Well, here's the question about that, though. So remember, anonymous. Uh, they oh, yeah. they start out, and it's probably groups of people that just want to see change and they're really good on computers and hacking, et cetera. But then does there get to a point where there can be infiltration from various sources? So then you question Absolutely. also some of the things that are said with, with the Q. And when you look at um, the possibility of there being misinformation being presented where they say it's the Q, but it's really something completely different. I mean, how do right. you... How do you know? Like, how do you put the barometer check on that? Well, um, let me let me just say, uh, first of all, that I'm so happy to be here with you and your with your audience, Rex. Uh, you are you are fantastic. I was just watching watching you do a show on a lady uh, who did uh, who was being abducted, who had a lot of abduction experiences, alien abduction experiences, and uh, you are you are wonderful. You are the hardest working man on YouTube, and I just really appreciate your stuff. And uh, for your audience who uh, may not recall me, I'm a, I am John D'Souza. I am FBI Special Agent Ret with a with an R E T dot retired uh, because I have left the uh, FBI. But I'm trying to I always uh, try to teach people on all these esoteric topics how to do their own investigation and find out what's really going on out there. Uh, now that we're living in a, in a time of complete and total deception all around us. So, yes, to get to your first question, yeah, there's a lot of, there is, just like there was with Anonymous, there is a lot of uh, deception going on uh, out there with people uh, claiming to be Q, uh, other sources claiming to be Q. Uh, how, however, the real, uh, the real Q has certain trip codes that they use on the boards, on the HN boards, and now the Akun boards, and uh, so that they identify themselves, who they are, the original source. And Q also tells us no outside comms. There, anyone who claims to be outside communications, uh, to be openly Q, is not Q. Uh, for instance, we have uh, we have this uh, individual who was running around uh, named Austin Steinbart, and he was. On, he was all over Twitter, uh, everywhere, saying that he was Q. And there was some evidence that he actually is a person who worked with NSA, or, or was it? No, I think it was the Department of it was the uh, Department of Energy, or or Department uh, one of the one of the arcane departments of intelligence uh, that there are. Uh, and so he had some good lingo and, and so forth. But uh, then he was uh, he was he was eventually arrested uh, by the FBI for uh, various <laughs> various cyber crimes that he had been doing. Uh, now let me just give your ins your audience an inside scoop on that. Uh, Audi uh, Austin Steinbart is um, is currently still claiming that he is or was Q, and he is I think he's out of prison. Uh, Right now, he's on the he's on the loose, and there is um, they are some people are making a, a documentary of his life that they are going to show in relation to who he really is and what his connection has been to this Austin to this uh, Q uh, phenomenon that's been going on. So that should be uh, that should be coming out uh, soon, and it will be very interesting. So so yeah. There are outside sources that are that say that they're Q, but they are they are pretty easy to discount uh, because Q says there are no outside communications allowed. 
with the Q group. So, okay, and I'm, I'm still attempting to understand that. So let's, there's no outside communications of the Q group. So if you go to look for a Q post or if that pulls up and you're like, yeah, this is it, what is some verbiage or you, you said tr um, coordinates or not coordinates? What did you yeah, call it? Yeah, they're, they're like coordinates. It's just trip codes. Trip codes. That, Thank that you. That identify on the uh, QN boards, on the AQN boards. And, uh, and you can also look it up on Q, uh, QPUB dot something. QPUB. You can also look it up on that and see all the latest drops uh, from Q. Uh, there's also... There's also Anons who are Q Anons who are very respected and who give some decoding, who give decoding of Q information because Q is not a new service. Q is military intelligence communication. Uh, it is because, why? Because we, ladies and gentlemen, we are in a war. We are in a global war and the war is the White Hat Alliance, uh, which is headed by by Trump, because that's the person that is happens to be the head of that alliance, and uh, by Donald Trump, and we and against the cabal, which are which are the Illuminati uh, bloodlines, uh, central bankers that have dominated dominated our society directly dominated the United States since 1908 with their central banking system and the debt slavery model that they have us under. And so that is in the process of being overthrown right now, thanks to the White Hat Alliance uh, with Donald Trump, uh, whose, whose most important title is not president of the United States. His most important title is leader of the White Hat Alliance. That's his most important title. And that's where we are today. Now, John, I gotta say this sounds so movie-ish, right? I mean, this sounds like something directly out of the entertainment industry. They're like, here you go, the most entertaining yeah. movie, or it's like a series almost. It's, it's more than a movie. It's, it's, a, it's a series. So with that being said, and I mean that as a compliment, I mean, just, it, it's also, I'm kind of going, really? Like there's one part of me that's going, I, I'm fighting myself because I'm looking at it from a practical standpoint. And I can certainly see with the media that it's almost as if this has already been infiltrated by forces that do not have the American structure and values best interests at heart, essentially, if that makes sense. It's, it seems like yeah. it's, they, they're creating division they're, and, and once you have a, an empire that's built up, how do you get rid of that empire? If it's much more powerful than any other empire, well, you have to go from within and you create fear, which then creates confusion, then it creates division, and then you can have conquest. So we're certainly in the fear-based part now. I mean, people are in fear of things they can't see. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's what they're trying to use. That's what the cabal is trying to use uh, in, in, um, in everything that they do to try to hang on to power. Uh, they're, they're using all of their assets they've activated all of their assets everywhere to try to fight uh fight against being dislodged from control of our society and, and so we see that we see that in um, in like three fronts one we see this uh with this uh, virus that has been that has been uh, spread that has been spread all over our society and all over the world really uh with um uh, with help and uh, with help and assistance uh, from, um, I don't know if I can say, uh, uh, the, uh, the other country, <laughs> the Asian yeah. country yeah, yeah, yeah. that put this together, that put this together and with help from certain criminal elements at our American universities, American universities, where these, uh, these uh, professors we're helping to develop this latest form of the virus. And those guys are under arrest right now and they're being interrogated. Uh, so we know that this was put together artificially, that it didn't just appear in some fish market in Wuhan and, and because somebody ate some stuff that they weren't supposed to, you know, that's, that's a weak cover story. That's what that is. Uh, and so we know that it was spread. Uh, it was spread here, but it was spread with the uh, willingness and the assistance 
of these uh, national, international medical agencies, medical agencies that uh, gave wrong information, uh, false information, and uh, that uh, it's just really, really uh, put us in a very bad, uh, bad state. And with mainstream media ginning up fear, fear, tremendous rates, and with uh, medical facilities inflating the numbers, the numbers of people getting sick, the numbers of people dying. Uh, you had all kinds of, you had uh, kits that were put out uh, that give false positives to people everywhere. That if you test an apple, if you test an apple with the kit, it'll say that the apple has virus. You know, so all of these things, because why? Because the hospitals were getting money from globalist organizations for every case, every new case that they would find, every new case they would find. Uh, they were getting tremendous amounts of money, uh, and that was that's been going on, and it continues to go on. Uh, so we're in a situation where they're trying to use fear. Uh, fear is really the virus, and uh, and really mainstream media is the other part of the virus, because they are absolutely complicit, and they have given up all all pretense of being journalists. They are now they are now activist alarmists. Uh, that's that's all they are, and that's what they do, and that's why it makes them so very very dangerous. Well, they're really good at reading scripts. I mean, they do an incredible job reading from what is being presented. And I'm like, okay, you're a wonderful repeater. You're a great regurgitator, <laughs> but you're not a reporter. You're not a researcher. So why call yourself that? Because right. that's not what you are. So with that being said. Right this information that you're presenting right now, are we dealing, is it, are we dealing with China on a global scale for power? Are we dealing with them for like leverage or real estate? When I say real estate, look at the South China Sea right now. And, and I've questioned things yeah. such as the bottom ship that goes, gets, you know, it's on fire at bay in San Diego. I think it started from the, the V section of the hull. So they said, but the official story was that I read, oh, it was, you know, they, they threw some rags away in an area and the, the rags had some chemicals on them. And so you had this spontaneous combustion that started a fire and the trash. And then that one issue caused a huge swath of smoke and, uh, you know, toxic chemicals to, to go over San Diego and it happened at the time that we're out in the South China Sea. So I'm just questioning like, was that some type of sabotage? I don't know. Yeah. yeah. What, what do you think about that? I think it's most likely anywhere you see China involved with uh, American real estate in any form, uh, you, you'll have a lot of cover stories going on and a lot of malfeasance uh, happening. Uh, and what's and what's going on now is that we are uh, well let me tell you i was i've been in contact with japan uh for like the last two weeks on a day-to-day -day basis and and also my military sources and they have told me they have all told me the same thing that right now anywhere that we have american bases because we have american bases in japan military bases in japan and in South, throughout South Korea as well, and other other Asian nations. Right now, they have had uh, a ten thousand percent increase in joint trainings with Americans, with the United States, and in military activity uh, increase on those bases. And the reason is because they see that in the next few months we're going to be looking at massive Chinese aggression. Uh, against Taiwan, against and against many other assets that the Chinese uh, claim uh, throughout the uh, area, and and even aggression against the United States uh, through California, and that is coming up. That is coming up by October, and the reason and everyone believes this. Everyone throughout Asia believes this is going to happen, and all of their militaries are getting ready for it. Uh, because every, they're all, no one's going to escape. They're going to have to deal with this. And, and the main reason, the main reason for this is because China has been notified that they are, uh, well, the CCP, the uh, Chinese Communist Party, ruling party, has been notified 
by pretty much by Donald Trump that uh, that he is aware and that the rest of the world is aware that they created this virus, that they launched it uh, first on their own people and then on the rest of the world, and that they are going to be held accountable for that. And Trump has even been getting coalitions of nations to agree with this, and he's getting them ready. And they are going to be um, in some form. Uh, the CCP, the ruling party of China, is going to be held accountable. And that means they're going to be destroyed. They're going to be erased. They're going to be destroyed completely in a matter of in a matter of months because they can't survive that accountability. They just can't. There's no way. Uh, and so. Uh, they're already hated by their own people for so many things they've done. Uh, and even in this instance, they were willing to sacrifice their own people uh, with the virus in order to get it going. And so they are on borrowed time. Uh, and as a result, uh, you know, a wounded tiger, that's when it's the most dangerous. So they have no choice but to move forward in aggressive move, moves to try to get the people back behind them again. Uh, they have no choice. They have to move forward on all of these things. And uh, I believe they are getting ready to move forward on all in all of these areas. Well, so Hong Kong is definitely, we we're hearing very little in the media about Hong Kong right now. And the protests were really big. And then the Cervezos demons came out. And then the news on that almost disappeared. And we're getting little bits and pieces again of that. But it seems like Hong Kong has essentially been usurped up by the CCP. And Taiwan is being more proactive right now, doing exercises, I think, to, to protect themselves from the possibility of an invasion from the CCP. So Australia has even had some, they've, had, they've been saying stuff to Australia, the CCP has, and aggress aggressive moves from the media that's been released anyways, from, from what I've read in the media, even the mainstream stuff. So with that being said, are they, you're making it appear like they're going to throw a Hail Mary then. Right. Yeah, they, they have to. They have to because otherwise they're, they're facing annihilation. They're facing annihilation. Uh, and so because, because uh, all, the, all the nations that they attacked with the virus, uh, with the virus are going to uh, come at them either militarily or economically. Uh, and it's going to it's going to spell the end of, of them, basically. Uh, I don't know how many people may have seen uh, what happened the other day, uh, the other day in uh, in Beijing when they had the uh, the CCP convention, the annual <laughs> CCP convention in Beijing. And there was this unbelievable uh, supernatural uh, thunderstorm that came up. It was the middle of the afternoon. It was daytime. The sun was shining, which the sun isn't shining very often in Beijing uh, because it's covered with smog most of the time. But on this day, it was the sun was shining. Suddenly, everything turned black. Suddenly, in the day of the convention, when they were all there, all the Communist Party members were there, uh, it turned black. The sky turned black all of a sudden. And this unbelievably aggressive thunder and lightning storm came up. And just and just wrecked right through the area like a tornado and it was terrible and so people the chinese people uh believe that that was a supernatural uh, omen against the ccp letting them know that uh their time is limited and that they are they are about to be destroyed and chinese people are very um they're very superstitious and they believe in these omens. They believe these omens are real. Uh, now, on the other side, many of us in the alternative community believe that that storm was possibly weather manipulation by the Alliance and that the Alliance uh, Allied Forces actually uh, sent that storm in to the CCP to let them know uh, what time it is. That's what we that's what we see it. Now, was it William Cohen that was a former FBI director? Uh, in the late he 90s? A, he possibly, oh, no, no. Cohen was never uh, FBI director. He was, but he had a lot of different uh, hats in the government uh, throughout the years. I, I know who he is. What, was he in the FBI? Uh, not as director. Not as, maybe you're thinking about Webster, William Webster. Um, let me see. The reason I'm asking is uh, there was a, 
back in 1997, there was a briefing, and actually I'm looking at the, here it is. Yeah, the DOD News Briefing, Secretary of Defense, the Secretary of Defense, William S. Cohen. Uh, Cohen's keynote addressed yeah. the conference on terrorism, weapons of mass destruction, and U.S. strategy at the Georgia Center. And this was, if I'm not mistaken, in reference to weather warfare. And the reason I'm bringing this up is they're talking about weather warfare in the late 90s and, and treaties, international treaties. And it seems like right now, China is just getting tagged with just these flood, you know, these trenches floods and rains and but not only china but japan and i um indonesia as well as india so that whole area is just getting tagged do you think that there's is is that natural artificial do you have any data on that i i believe that uh, weather manipulation is a real thing and i believe it's used by both sides uh by the cabal uh, and it's also used by the allied nations the alliance of nations as well against them uh, so we see it going both ways. I mean, way back, uh, what was it? Way back when uh, when Trump had uh, the Supreme Court justice that he had them, he had him ready for uh, to be nominated, and uh, and all the uh, cabal didn't want this guy to be nominated. So they had their they had the Democrats uh, create some kind of some kind of sexual accusations against him that were they were just ridiculous and uh they just had uh, these actors these go in there and accuse him of all these things well at the time that that was happening uh, uh trump was told he better withdraw that guy's name uh because if he doesn't uh they had they had six they had like five tornadoes lined up off the coast off the coast uh and uh, I think it was like North Carolina and they were and the five tornadoes were just waiting out there I mean they just nobody had ever seen anything like this before the tornadoes were just sitting there off the coast out at sea and they were just waiting and uh and Trump said no I'm not going to I'm not going to withdraw his name I'm going to leave put this guy's going to get on the Supreme Court and they sent in those tornadoes one by one they sent them in one, two, three, four, five, and they created a, a wreck. They created a wreck, but it was that was one of the more obvious instances of weather manipulation by the cabal that everybody could see. It was very public. Uh, usually, it's not that public. It's not. It's not. Uh, it's not set up. You know, with like, okay, we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it. Uh, usually, it's just quick. And swift, like what happened in Beijing the other day. Um, but that instance, I mean, that instance alone shows real evidence that uh, that both sides use this weather manipulation. And the weather manipulation is real. It's real, and it exists, and we see it in action all the time. What's going to happen to the Three Gorges Dam? Is it going to collapse? I think so. Yeah, I think that's the biggest dam they have in in China uh, there. And uh, there's there's thoughts that um, that China is going to that the CCP may actually collapse it on purpose uh, to create a lot of death and destruction, and then they can uh, and then they can because they have no problem sacrificing their own people. They're always looking for ways to depopulate their own people in China. Uh, that's that's something that's always popular with the CCP. Uh, and, and because they take that example from Mao, Mao Zedong himself, who committed uh, genocide against his own people all the time. Uh, so there is some feeling that uh, it's possible that uh, the CCP is going to collapse those dams on purpose and create lots of death and destruction so that they can then create a refugee movement where they can attack California and the United States uh, with a refugee movement that will be all all soldiers just just like what they did with the just like what the narcos did against our southern border in mexico uh when they when they sent in all these uh, military age men uh, against our borders uh and then they had the and then the the uh cabal had the mainstream news 
report. No, these are all women and children. They're just women and children, please. And it turns out, you know, like 10, 10, five percent of the people were women and children. It was mostly military age men. So the CCP may be planning a very similar operation uh, against uh, California, where they're going to create just a huge movement of refugees, millions, millions of refugees that are going to go against uh, go against our our border with um, California. There, and that's something that is coming up one way or the other. Now. With California and the ports being out there, I've heard a lot of talk, and I can't verify any of this, so I don't know. I've just read some bits and pieces about how the CCP has a large influence over some of the ports and possibly even some ownership. Now, with that being said, would it be how difficult would it be for a foreign nation to bring in troops and gear through ports? in container vessels, container vehicles. So you would think, oh, well, you know, we look at these new lawnmowers that are coming in, or we've got these new dollar store gadgets that are gonna be in these containers when it could be actually gear uh, from, from a military overseas. Is that something that our own intelligence looks at very carefully? I would hope so. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's a very strong possibility of that happening, not just in California, but in, um, but also on the New York side, uh, on New York State, on that side of the equation, uh, and I don't know where they would ship them in from uh, on that on the North Atlantic side, uh, but they could do it. They could definitely do it, and uh, yeah, I think they're going to be coming in through the ports, and that is something that uh, that we are that the United States government is aware of. They that we know that that is on their drawing board. That is on their drawing board. So that's one of the reasons why Trump has cut off immigration uh, during this period. Uh, He has basically cut off pretty much all of immigration uh, for this period. But um, but they know that refugees is a very hard thing to cut off uh, because there's that uh, there's that fake news aspect of it uh, where fake news will be reporting, you know, that. we're, we're letting people die at sea and, and so forth and things like that. So, so that's going to be a whole new fight that we're going to be facing uh, very soon. So we need to get prepared for that uh, and resolve and then prepare our resolve against it when it starts happening. Now, there's also um, information about the, the microchips, et cetera, that have been put in very sensitive pieces of equipment that have Intel. And and then there was that huge hack where there was like 20 something million people that had security clearances and all that was sent to China. I think that was four or five years ago. So it seems like they've been kind of building up profiles and with, with all the data that they've absorbed, maybe they think that they've got an advantage now with technology and if they could figure out a way to fry our communications or electronics here, that that gives them maybe a fighting chance they they see oh yeah absolutely and they continue to collect uh tremendous amounts of data uh from us uh the latest the latest enormous uh move in that area is the uh is the the TikTok application that all all the kids are using uh, all the kids and young adults are using uh it's it's extremely popular and and now we've got information uh, from the government that TikTok is a CCP application made and created by by the CCP uh, to uh, collect information uh, from people who use the application, and and that's gone out in the news. People know about it, and yet the people and yet TikTok is still existing, it's still existing for some reason, and uh, we've got to get rid of it. We've got to get rid of it right away. Uh, and uh, you know, people just uh, uh, people don't realize how serious this is uh, when uh, China, when the CCP gets gets your information, collects all of it from your computer, because you put some ridiculous uh, application on there uh, that you don't really need, and that is is just for entertainment, and really it doesn't serve any function. Um, so I really, so I really wish that uh, there was a way 
to uh, to stop these applications from uh, even the popular ones from uh, getting squirreling their way into American culture uh, the way that uh, TikTok did. So it seems like right now the division is greater than I have seen it in my lifetime. And some people compare this to the '60s when you had the Vietnam War and you know the, the JFK assassination and the um, the racial riots, etc. And the media is really, in my opinion, pushing division by using any means necessary. And they've almost gotten to a point to where, well, I, I would say that they have gotten to a point where it's, it's an absolute science, where they're tapping into the subconscious mind and people yeah. don't even realize how much they're being manipulated. Uh, talk oh, to yeah. somebody about a face diaper now. It's like talking to somebody about politics. <laughs> and they're, you know, I mean, I was even today, I went to the, the eye doctor and I was like, well, okay, I like, you know, I'm seeing how you're all wearing your, your coverings here. And um, I said, I, I didn't really want to. So wear did my you face. have to wear it too, to go the in face there? diaper? I, I, yeah. well, I wore an EM, this is what I did. Yes. But let me tell you what kind it was. I, I was, I was going to wear literally a face diaper, you know, I was, uh, um, but I was like, okay, well, that's good for verbal vomit. It's good for um, verbal diarrhea. It's good for bad breath. That will it really work against the uh, Cervezos demon? Probably not. But you know what? 99% of the facial coverings people are wearing won't cover the Cervezos demons anyway because you need a P100 mask. It's a 0.1 micron. The thing's miniature. If you know, right. so, so with that being said, I just find it funny when people give you a hard time telling you to wear your, your, your muzzle while they're wearing theirs wrong. Like they'll have their nose <laughs> out and they're like, put your muzzle on, man. And it's like 1984. The, the movie 1984, they're like this. And I'm yeah, thinking to myself, exactly. this reminds me of 1984. Put your exactly. muzzle on. Let's see how far we can push you. Let's see how much yeah. you're going to put up with. And we'll, we'll just keep going. We'll keep going. We'll keep going. Yeah. And then people are saying, no, no, thank you. But they're very small pockets. So they're, they're just testing the waters, yeah. see how much they can. And this has got a new industry behind it, right? And you've got yeah. these two factions now. You've got the globalization system where they're trying to s succeed but it's almost turning it into, they keep failing, right? It's like the localized micro economies going back to the states, going back to the nation. I mean, why would you have another nation make your antibiotics or your vaccines yeah. or right. certain products that you're going to be consuming, especially when they want world domination and you're in their way? I just don't understand it. But some people are like, dude, don't worry about it, Rex. Go watch TV. Yeah. I mean, it's it's unbelievable, and uh, they've got us. You know, there's there's all these doctors, uh, real doctors in the field. They're having a, they're holding a press conference right now. Uh, a group of uh, field uh, field doctors, and they are they are telling the truth about the mask and any forms of these masks that are being used by people, and also uh, about the virus as well. That it's all that it's all uh, ginned up fear. Uh, that uh, all the medical evidence shows that these masks don't do anything. They don't really don't do anything uh, to stop the virus. Uh, all they do is they stop our own carbon dioxide from escaping. They're making us breathe our own toxic, uh, our own toxic waste, and they're and they're dumbing people down. They 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 can actually they can actually create brain damage in uh, Americans and, and create uh, all kinds of consequences, medical consequences. Is that and, what's already happened, John? <laughs> yeah, yeah. As a matter of fact, uh, there's there's a lot of, there's some thought in the uh, alternative community that, uh, that the second wave that is coming is not going to be this virus. That one of the things they wanted to establish with this virus is they wanted to get people wearing the muzzle because what that does is it suppresses their immune system. It makes them, it actually makes them sicker because of course they're breathing their own toxic fumes, their own toxic waste there. And it suppresses their immune system because the, um, because the cabal wants to get us ready for the second wave, which is a different, more deadly virus that they're cooking up right now to get it ready to spread here. And once our, all of our immune systems are de depressed from these muzzles that everybody's wearing, then they're going to hit us with the real virus that's going to be real, that's going to have real deadly consequences. And we're looking for that possibly in October. So we'll see.
Well, it's interesting, the timing as well, because in the summer, you've got the sun and you've got the cosmic rays, which yeah. literally have an effect on the cervezos. Uh, you can look at the nanometer scale. And I was talking to a DOD engineer and inventor recently about the actual nanometer scale and uh, certain ultraviolet lights, et cetera, and the cervezos demon. So the, you know, this time versus October, and then it's right before November. Hmm. Now, here's, let's, let's talk about it. Let's, let's get into this. You have some very interesting predictions for, for, for now until November and then after. And I want to question you if you think that this new Intel report here that's talking about the, the fifth generation wireless communications, autonomous artificial intelligence that can be used in combat project, uh, what is it called there? Project Move or something like that. Anyway, I've got it. Yeah, here it is. Project Mayhem. Is that right? No. No, 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 no. Hold on a second. Project, Mayhem is a word. Project Maven. Project Maven. Yeah, Project Maven to deploy computer Maven. algorithms to war zone by year's end. Well, this is in 2017. This is talking about that. So we've got, now we've got unsupervised artificial intelligence that learns from its surroundings. We've got the unidentified advanced aerial threats project, which is underneath Naval Intelligence, which is openly admitted now. So they're telling us that they have UFOs, unidentified flying craft, and right. they're showing us Tic Tacs, which were probably drones that are ours. <laughs> yeah, they are drones. Are they? Yes, I knew they it. are. Well, definitely. So, so with all this being said, do we have dis like disclosure or can will we have a fake alien invasion? Is that on the horizon, a fake alien invasion or a real one? Well, well that's like three separate things that you just – uh, kind of mashed together there. You're so the, you got I, the Q shirt on. You got this. And thank you for so, you're right. I do that sometimes, and I apologize. I'm like, let me ask him 27 questions right now. Go. So if I'm going to pick out one, I will say, uh, I will say that the uh, the algorithms and the military, the military uh, algorithms AIs that are being that are they're talking about there. It's very. Po I have gotten information that it's very possible that they're they're talking about Q because it's very possible that Q is actually a quantum computer artificial intelligence that can actually look into the past uh, and and pick out things from the past and then look forward into the future as well and help to create certain timelines that we're living along right now uh, so that so that I actually so it actually may turn out that Q is not a person at all. It may turn out that Q is actually a, an AI, a computer algorithm, uh, uh, a quantum computer, which is why uh, Trump is actually showing a lot of interest in quantum computers right now that he actually announced that there's going to be established 17 centers around the country uh, for quantum computers. Uh, whatever that means, uh, he just he just made that announcement. So it's a uh, so I think that that um, that that uh, computing the quantum computers and and the algorithms in military use uh, that's exactly that may be exactly what Q is, and that's going to be further developed uh, in our military as well. And that was one of the announcements that you just had in there. So I find that very interesting on the timing, especially as we go forward here. And we're and we're using this uh, this system from Q that shows amazing preciseness with the deltas, the time deltas, and with the uh, coincidence of of Q plus, which is supposedly uh, Donald Trump uh, when he puts in his communications. So we'll see. That's a very interesting announcement that you uh, that you went into there about the uh, the computing. Uh, power in the uh, in the military exercises in the future uh, on the other on the other thing that you talked about the uh, uh, the uh, announcement of the uh, that continuing tic tac <laughs> tic tac fiasco which they uh, has other names too uh, that's just that's just a that's just a cabal farce that is being put forward and it's going to continue to be put forward uh, on Fox News. They just announced New York Times is that is that we're going to get more of these Tic Tac videos uh, released, released. And of course, uh, and of course, that means 
we'll have uh, to the Stars Academy rearing their ugly head again and coming out and, and saying, you know, with uh, Tom DeLonge saying, oh, yeah, this is proof and using CIA mind control phrases like, uh, like this is proof that we are not alone. We are not alone. Uh, and and things like that. So we we have to get ready for that uh, because uh, it's it's coming. It's coming very soon. If I could. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, so you think that's a lot coming of- soon? Then the uh, they're going to say we've got a bunch more footage. And I called in December of last year that they're probably going to show us some type of artifact. Is what I predicted as an extraterrestrial. They artifact. are. They are. The, uh, well, and also materials. They say they say now that they have materials from UFO crash ships or something like that. So yeah, they're going to show they're going to show supposedly uh, artifacts and uh, and materials. Even the way it's worded, we have craft that are not made on Earth. We we have off-world craft that were not made on Earth. That could be metamaterials that we made at the ISS space station or we exactly. made on the so it's exactly. just verbiage yes exactly so that technically there's they're telling that's why that's another cia mind control phrase oh we have materials that were not made on earth well technically they're telling the truth because it was made at the is iss off world off off the planet lit, literally uh that doesn't mean it has anything to do with alien visitors or uh, or ufos so yeah, they're they're playing game where they're they're trying to create this movement to try to take over ufology and uh, and get their own shows on on History Channel and uh, it's just and they're and it's just ridiculous because they're they're using fake materials. If I could, am I able to share my screen? Sure. And now this I want to show your audience is the most ridiculous thing I've seen in a long time uh, since last year when Fox News did this last year. So so I wanted to play this for you guys so you can see it. It's it's unbridled unbridled chicanery, okay, as my grandfather used to say. Uh, check this out. Now, does everyone remember uh, these these Tic Tac videos, <laughs> these ridiculous Tic Tac videos where they had the pilots saying, oh, man, that's incredible, man. I can't believe this. And yeah. it was just it was just drones. It was high grade military drones that were the most advanced at that time in 2003, 2004. Uh, they were super advanced because they didn't show any exhaust. They didn't show anything. Uh, any uh, rotor wash or anything uh, and they were super advanced and this was uh, this was the the whistle was blown on this by a, a former engineer that actually has worked on some of these drones and that's Mike Barra for those who know Mike Barra uh, and he actually exposed the fact that uh, these are just military drones as a matter of fact they are now in current use in the Navy in the Navy right now but they were at that time they were super secret, top secret, and they needed a place to experiment with them to make sure that they work. And so they decided to do it on the North Atlantic Sea in the bosom of the most secure place in the world, in the bosom of the Nimitz Carrier Group in 2004. So that's what they did. They did it in the middle of the Nimitz Carrier Group, which is a destroyer uh, with the uh, Navy. And, and so, so that they could have a secure place to experiment this stuff. And that's what they did. And the way that you know that the Nimitz was part of this experiment, they were providing cover and protection uh, for these uh, drones to be experimented with, is that when they saw these drones, the uh, Nimitz never went to general quarters. Never went to general quarters, okay? They would have done that if they weren't part of the experiment, okay? For those of you who know Navy stuff, you know what general quarters is. It's it's the worst thing that can happen on a ship. It's uh, sounding the alarm that there's a hostile uh, enemy that's nearby. And that never happened. The reason is because Nimitz was part of that part of that experiment. And now and so who can we expect to come back 
uh, with this, uh, these materials, these materials, uh, the old reliable, can you, can you see that Rex? Those I, guys? I'm still looking at the New York, I mean the Fox news thing. Oh, so I have to do, oh, this yeah. is weird the way they do it. Okay. So I have to do new share again. And while you're doing that new share, let me ask you if this technology could be reverse engineered from Roswell or something that they picked up in a pre they got the metals and they did some reverse engineered technology. Well, I don't, I don't think so because, because that in that stuff, I know where that stuff went and uh, it went to a, a different, uh, it actually, it went to parts of the cabal that uh, used it for different purposes. Uh, I think, I think this material and this latest stuff is all is all fraud. I think it's all just fraud. It's all just, uh, it, it's all just misleading us uh, to um, try to get control of the ufology movement. I think that's what they're doing. And now, can you see the new screen I shared here? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, and now let me ask a question as well, if I can, because I've actually interviewed people that are big fans of to the stars Academy yeah, and, yeah. Um, and I've interviewed yeah, people that are like kind of work with them a, a bit. So I want to be as respectful to everybody as possible. And I also think that the truth is the most valuable message. So, I mean, the, right. not everybody, what do you, these guys are looking for the truth, right? I mean, you don't think that these everybody there's controlled opposition or anything do you have you I, excited about I, I well i can't say that they're looking for the truth because i'm presenting the truth here uh what i'm what i'm showing right here has to be the truth or else uh or else uh i, I couldn't show it i wouldn't be able to show it and, and here's to the stars academy when and they're coming back real soon and they're coming back with these materials that are supposedly from the off world off-world made materials uh they're going to be back very soon and here's what and this is the truth you can ask your friends next time show them this screen uh here is when they were doing their first press conference which they did at this huge theater and it's a and the fact is all of these guys are former cia operators okay they're former cia officials all right like this guy you're seeing right here and CIA people are not the people who are here to tell you the truth about anything, okay? So if you have an organization that's all former CIA officials, uh, I'd say you're in, in big trouble if what you're looking for is the truth. That's number one. Number two, uh, here's the, one of the CIA officials, Chris Lemon, Chris Mellon, sorry. Uh, and he's standing in this empty theater. This is a common... CIA operation, uh, CIA psychological operation, to stand in a theater that's completely empty and pretend it's full, it's filled with an audience filled with people, and then do your press conference as if you're talking to a whole bunch of people, which who aren't there, they're really not there. So when they did their, they did their conference, here he is standing in front of a a, a thing that is, uh, and I think you can see the arrow, uh, this thing that was in the air. And he actually said, a possible UFO uh, that we have right here in photographs. Well, I mean, shortly after the, he, this fiasco went on, uh, there was further research into this picture. And it turns out this picture was actually, well, not only was it not a UFO of any sort, uh, it was actually a balloon from the party of a one-year-old child. And, and the reason we know that is because the man who took the picture uh, came forward. Uh, his name was Steven, Steve Mira. And this, the, the supposed Nimitz UFO, as it was said by uh, Chris Mellon at this conference, uh, was actually a party balloon uh, picture taken in Manchester, UK in 2005 by Steve Mira. And here's the accurate, the more cleared up picture resolution picture of the party balloon which says the number one upside down because it was from the party of birthday party of a one-year-old child all right so these are the guys who are who are collecting money uh they're collecting money from people 
to do this uh, research. Uh, they have a they have some kind of a rock star from the '90s uh, as one of their spokesmen, uh, and uh, and they are going to continue this movement with Fox News and New York Times to uh, continue to bring forward this material from off world. And I want to people, I just wanted people to see what these guys are really all about, because here's what it is. And I want to tell you something else. Uh, these guys, uh, they have, they are collecting, uh, they are collecting money and selling stock. Uh, in other words, they fall under the SEC, Securities Exchange Commission. And when you have a public, a public uh, uh, showing of a false of a of a false statement like we did here uh the sec would investigate that right away right away because that's a major violation of securities exchange commission laws to have a false representation that is proven false in front of everybody and yet the sec has not taken these guys down okay now that tells you more than anything else because i'm saying i'm saying to you the only way that the stc hasn't gone after these guys for doing this is that these guys are connected to something much much bigger something that does involve new york times cnn uh fox news and probably players that are even bigger than that uh for uh for them to still be running around doing things like this so i just wanted people to see that to know that as we now enter this new phase, this new phase of uh, materials that are off, made off world and uh, the other nonsense that we're going to be seeing coming out very soon. Well, you know, so it's interesting because when I read that headline, I thought to my, the first thing that came to my mind was the way that it was worded. So that's one thing I'm really good at is watching the media and the mainstream news right. and seeing the underlying themes. Right. I, this is one thing that I feel that I was, you know, I've always been good at. And so at the same time, it's almost like a, a double whammy because yes, it in, in, in a sense, I do think that there is absolutely other craft out there that aren't our own that they're finding. Now, what, what is it? Where is it going? What's, where is it from? I don't know. So I don't think every single time somebody's seen a UFO, it's one of ours or, um, right a drone. So there is a classification now, a new group under the, the, the Naval Intelligence where they're going to take data from the CIA, the FBI, the local sheriff's <laughs> office. And within 180 days, they got to send it in. And they got to say, this is what I saw. This is the location, etc." Now this Academy to the stars um, there, I think that there's probably a combination of people that are maybe working with it that don't realize certain agendas. Like they think they're like, wow, Hey man, I'm going to be a part of disclosure. This is awesome. <laughs> Yeah, I used to play in a band too. Yeah, you know, and they're like, this is great. But then what you just showed me, I mean, dude, if that's true, like what you're presented the way you said, like they're like, they're showing you a balloon. I mean, dude, really? That, uh, that happened. A balloon? Happened. In a real life. Yeah. In front of the audience, like.